calculator names. Out of the various well-known calculator brands, some companies are much better at coming up with names that make sense than others, and Texas Instruments is notably notorious for having a somewhat strange naming scheme. I think part of the reason I go after TI for this the most is because the naming scheme actually looks like it should make a lot of sense at first glance, but then actually ends up making hardly any sense at all the more you look into it. To prove my point, have a look at these names and try and guess which order the calculators were released in. As you can tell, TI seems to be about as back and forth with the numbers on their calculators as Xbox versions are, while some brands like Numworks manage to make their calculator names a lot clearer. You'd think that a company making calculators would be able to figure out which numbers go first, but apparently not. I tried to do some research to figure out if there was any significance to the names, but I wasn't actually able to come up with that much, so assuming that there is some significance and TI isn't just pulling numbers out of a hat, please be sure to tell me if you know. I actually decided to send an email to TI about this and ask them as well, so we'll see how that goes by the end of the video. Anyways, as of more recently, TI has stopped creating new numbers and decided to instead begin tacking on little extra bits to the calculator names. They actually began doing this as far back as 1996 with the TI-92-2, but it's become a lot more common lately with longer and longer names as a result. This means that instead of picking between just a TI-83 and a TI-82, you've got to pick between your TI-84 plus CET Python edition and your TI-83 Premium CE edition Python. Obviously, this just ends up making the whole matter even more confusing, especially since the suffix scheme doesn't even seem to be consistent across even just the different families of calculators produced by TI. To hopefully clear up some of the confusion, I decided to look through all the different suffixes and see what information I could gather from them. Starting with what I believe to be the first instance of TI adding stuff to the end of their calculator models, we've got two. The TI-92-2, which was the first calculator to use this, was basically just an upgraded version of the TI-92, though then apparently TI decided to stop using the 2 suffix and started using a bunch of other ones instead. However, they then decided to bring it back again on the TI-Inspire with the TI-Inspire CX-2. The only reason I can come up with for them taking it away and then bringing it back again is not wanting to have two numbers in the name, since the TI-92 already had numbers in it but the TI-Inspire didn't, though that seems kind of dumb. Once they stopped using 2 for upgraded versions of calculators, they then decided to start using PLUS, which seemed to be a lot more popular. This was notably used on the TI-83 and 84 Plus series, though there was also a TI-92 Plus and a TI-Inspire CAS Plus. With the release of the TI-84 Plus CE in 2015, it seems that TI is now only using the plus suffix for the TI-84 family, and has started using premium for the 83 and advanced for the 82. It seems confusing why they all have to be different, though maybe it was just to make the differences between the families more clear, though I'm not really sure. While the families are pretty similar, one difference between the older 83 and 84 Plus models is the inclusion of an internal clock and USB port on the monochrome 84 Plus. However, this only applies to older models as the color screen models of both families all have clocks and USB. However, TI couldn't be content with only one suffix per calculator, and with the Plus stuff basically merging into the base model name, they had to come up with more things to note various upgrades. Enter the Silver Edition, a suffix found on both the TI-83 and 84 Plus. The TI-83 Plus Silver Edition had a transparent case, improved processor, more ROM, and more RAM, though TI never actually modified the operating system to fully make use of the amount of RAM they added. The TI-84 Plus Silver Edition wasn't as different compared to its predecessor, though it also had a bit of added ROM as well. Before we continue on with the suffixes signifying upgrades, there are also some suffixes for regional variants as well. The first one, .fr, was pretty self-explanatory being sold only in France. The .fr suffix could be found on a good number of calculators being used in both the 82, 83, 76, and 84 families, though it now appears to have been discontinued since 2015. In 2019, TI introduced a dash C suffix, which is a Chinese variant, and in 2015, they introduced a dash T variant to both the Inspire and 84 Plus family used in Europe. These regional variants usually only have small differences necessary to comply with different exam specifications. 
Now for a few suffixes which aren't as common throughout different families. First, there's the TI-73 Explorer, which was an upgraded version of the TI-73 and is still around today. There's also the TI-82 Stats and Stats.fr, which were upgraded versions of the TI-82 with, as the name suggests, added statistics features as well. The TI-84 Plus also had a pocket variant released in France, which was much smaller than the original model. On the topic of less common suffixes, the TI-84 Plus C Silver Edition was a model that was only released for two years. It was similar to the TI-84 Plus Silver Edition, though it had a colored screen. However, it was significantly underpowered and still used the older CPU found in monochrome calculators, making it quite slow. Another thing causing slowdown was an issue with the way TI decided to add more flash memory, which made flash access a lot slower as well. There are a few suffixes which are only found in the TI Inspire family, so let's go over them next. The first of these is the CAS suffix, which denotes that the model, believe it or not, has a CAS, or computer algebra system. One of the reasons as to why TI makes both CAS and non-CAS models of the TI Inspire is the fact that many tests do not allow calculators with a CAS, so it is important to let the buyer know whether or not their calculator will be allowed. The ClickPad and TouchPad versions are also variants of the TI Inspire, with the differences being the method of navigating through the calculator's menus. The ClickPad uses a clicky D-pad, while the TouchPad has a touch-sensitive one similar to a trackpad on a laptop. Also in the TI Inspire series, there are a few major revisions of the calculator with the CX and CX2. The CX has been officially discontinued, meaning that the current version of the calculator still receiving updates is the CX2. After that nice break in the TI Inspire family, let's hop back to our favorite TI 83 and 84 Plus family to finish things off. Starting in 2015, TI released the TI 84 Plus CE and 83 Premium CE, which could almost be in their own family given that they use a different processor and are much different from their monochrome predecessors. The CE calculators also have variants themselves, with the 84 Plus CET being a European model of the TI 84 Plus CE, and the Python Edition slash Edition Python calculators support Python programming. The second most recent member of the color screen calculators with Python support is the TI-82 Advanced Edition Python, being released in 2021. In the same year, the TI-84 Plus CE Python Edition was also released, bringing Python support to US models as well. That covers about all the variants and their differences, though I can't say it's really helped me understand the naming scheme any better. If anything, I might be slightly more confused than when I started, so let's see if TI ever got back on the email I sent them. As you can see, it appears TI doesn't know any more about what they're doing than we do, though that isn't necessarily surprising. If anyone at TI is watching this video, though, please consider making things a little simpler in future calculator models. Thanks for watching this video, and if you found it interesting or learned something, consider subscribing to support the channel. Be sure to let me know what you guys think of the weird naming schemes in the comments, and as always, this has been Tiny Hacker, and I hope to see you in the next video.